In my opinion, diaphragmatic breathing is by far one of the most misunderstood and misapplied concepts in all of the fitness industry, including yoga, rehab, exercise itself, etc. And the list can go on. Typically what you hear is breathe into your belly and expand this area slowly and as much as you can. And that doesn't make a lot of sense for a couple of different reasons we're going to get into, but let's just start with the fact that the lungs aren't in the belly, the lungs are in the rib cage. So why are we not trying to expand the rib cage and the focus is down here? Now we know that controlled tempoed breathing with an extended exhale and a slow inhale is great for down-regulating our nervous system, getting ourselves to relax, decreasing stress, et cetera. And I think that's where most of these positive benefits are when people go to expand their belly. So it doesn't necessarily matter as much where you're expanding as long as the tempo is right. However, this can be less efficient and for some people potentially problematic for their biomechanics. And I wanna get into that right now. So we've got our rib cage here and we've got our diaphragm here and we've got our pelvic floor down below. Now our pelvic floor and our diaphragm should have these synchronized functions. So when one descends, the other one descends. When one ascends upon exhalation, the other one ascends upon exhalation. So inhalation, exhalation, there are these paired movements that should happen together. Now, when we actually inhale, the mechanics that should happen at the rib cage is circumferential expansion, meaning expansion in every direction. That includes front to back, that includes side to side, that also includes down here at the lowest ribs. At the pelvis, what should happen is we should move into more of this descended pelvic floor position. So these anomaly bones are going to very, very, very slightly move into external rotation as my hand represents the pelvic floor action and it descends. Then when we exhale, we're going to have an ascension of the pelvic floor. We're also going to have these ribs move into an exhaled position. Now, how does the belly play a role with this? Well, typically when we inhale, we should have the rib cage expand and the belly expand pretty much simultaneously. And it should happen as one smooth rising together, one smooth falling together upon exhalation. However, this diaphragmatic breathing strategy of breathing into our bellies doesn't make a lot of sense when you consider what needs to happen at the rib cage for proper expansion. By far, one of the biggest problems I see with people that have, whether it's stiff backs or achy shoulders or just an overall big limitation in their general mobility is their rib cage is very rigid and stiff. Now let's think about how this plays into it. If the rib cage can open and close as needed upon the thousands of breaths we take every single day, then that means that that rib cage is constantly in a state of expansion or compression. Same thing with our pelvis. Now, this is necessary because it allows for fluidity to occur. It allows for us to be able to rotate from side to side. But if we have only a belly breathing strategy, then what that does is it forces air down into these lower ribs and that's pretty much it. And this is very common when you see people who are very stiff and rigid, but they often have this big rib flare. These ribs right down here are flared up like that. What that represents is these bucket handle ribs, which are more of the lower ribs. They're more of the pliable ribs. They're more of the ribs that can actually change shape most easily within our axial skeleton. The skeleton minus the limbs is pretty much what that means. So if these ribs and bones can change shape the most easily relative to other bones, then that means that when we have a poor breathing strategy, we're able to move these ribs up and out of the way so we can expand our belly to make room for a compensatory breathing strategy. This can be helpful in the short term, but it causes rigidity of the rib cage in the long term. Not great, right? So I'm not saying that we should never expand our bellies. I'm just saying it should happen synchronously alongside full expansion of our rib cage. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and say, I've been working on my diaphragmatic breathing for forever, but I still feel really stiff, really rigid, and I'm not really seeing much long-term benefit. This is probably why. So let me show you a better alternative to actually getting genuine expansion of your rib cage alongside with your belly and being able to synchronize that with the action of your pelvic floor.
After teaching this about a million times, I've found that the best way to get people to sense what a proper diaphragmatic breath is, is on their side. Because there's some research that shows that if you're in a sideline position, you're getting more compression of your rib cage from side to side, which will open up expansion from front to back. And when you're on your back, sometimes people's necks can get involved and it's just a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna start here on our side. And you wanna be perfectly supported on something like a yoga block or a pillow that allows your neck to stay neutral and in line with your spine. You don't wanna be down here or cranked up here, just nice and chill and relaxed. And I have my feet slightly against the wall, but they're really just there for reference. And I'm in the amount of hip bend that allows me to stay perfectly relaxed. So if you need to get further away, that's okay. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your pelvis is neutral. So if I put my hand on my hip and I imagine my pelvis is a bowl of water, I can arch my back and spill it out the front or I can tuck my hips and spill it out the back. You want your pelvis to be neutral with the wall that's right there so it's perfectly in line with it. And that's really all you have to do other than making sure that your head is in line with your hips. So if my head is too far forward like this, I'm gonna use more of my neck to breathe. If my head is too far back here, I'm gonna flare my ribs here. So your head has to be perfectly in line with your shoulder and your hip. That's really all you gotta pay attention to. Now you can keep this hand hanging out on the ground. This hand is right here chilling. And what you're gonna do is gently exhale through your mouth for about five to 10 seconds. And as you do that, you're going to slowly feel your rib cage come down and you're going to feel your side abs engage very subtly or a little bit more than subtle, depending on the person. You're going to then pause and close your mouth. So it's going to look like this. As I close my mouth, I'm going to place my tongue against the roof of my mouth softly, but enough so that way I'm getting coverage of my tongue on my palate. And then I'm going to pause for about one to five seconds, depending on how relaxed I can be throughout that. If you start to feel anxious at all, or you need to breathe, you've probably gone too long. So somewhere in that pause, and then very slightly, about one out of 10, hold on to these side abs as you inhale through your nose. And that's going to give you expansion of your rib cage from front to back. And also you will feel a little belly rise simultaneously. So as you do that, it should be a silent inhale. I should not hear you inhale, but I should hear you exhale. So it's like this for a full breath cycle. Exhale. I'm only going to inhale as long as I can without losing much of my side abs and staying chill. So the inhale is gonna be about three to five seconds and then do that for about two minutes. So a five to 10 second exhale, one to five second pause, and then three to five second inhale, all depending on how relaxed and chill you can be. As a form of progression, what you can do is now get in a supine position. You want a 90 degree bend at both your knees and your hips and you wanna rest your feet on something about the height that'll allow you to do that. And for me, I have a towel roll, and this is helpful for most people, that allows my neck to feel supported, but it's not so thick to where my head is being pushed back like this and it's not so thin that my chin can drop. Again, chin has to be pointed at the ceiling. And now do the same exact thing. So you can exhale. Now, as you inhale, the question is, can you inhale without feeling any of your neck whatsoever? If you do, you're inhaling too hard or for too long. And you need to make sure you feel a little bit of those side abs, just a tiny bit is gonna allow you to get circumferential expansion of the rib cage and also a little bit simultaneous rise of the belly there.